Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species specific care and husbandry videos like this, then be sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click the notification bell and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any videos I upload in the future. Now, this is a species that is near and dear to my heart. It's a tarantula that I was after for many years trying to get my hands on and add to my collection. But it seemed anytime it was available for sale, I didn't have the money to buy it. And when I did have the money to buy it, no one had any in stock. I sent emails and made posts multiple times asking different dealers if they had any available or would be ordering some on imports. And time and time again, I got the same message. No one is available. They just weren't available at that time. So when the stars aligned and one of these was available at the same time I was about to place an order, I did not pass up that opportunity. So I'm very excited this week to be covering one of my favorite tarantulas. Now, last week I uploaded a video on the curly hair tarantula and literally hours before that video uploaded, they issued a new revision to the name. They reclassified some species in the Brachypelma genus to this new genus, Tildacaudal. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I've seen like five different pronunciations. So if you know exactly how to pronounce it, be sure to leave that phonetic spelling down below in the comments for the rest of us. Initially, how it was explained to me was that the tarantulas in the Brachypelma genus with the red rump were gonna be moved to this new genus, and the tarantulas with the red legs were gonna stay as Brachypelmas. But that's not entirely true. It's, it's definitely an oversimplification. Because this tarantula does have a red rump, does not have red legs, but it is staying in the Brachypelma genus. Brachypelma albiceps, known in the hobby as the Mexican golden red rump tarantula or the Amula red rump, is one of the best tarantulas in the hobby. This species has a black velvety abdomen and legs with bright red setae on the abdomen and a light gold carapace that makes it a gorgeous addition to any collection. This is a new world tarantula that does not have medically significant venom, but is equipped with urticating hairs that can be itchy if you're sensitive to them. The B. albiceps was described in 1903 and is found in the savanna and scrublands of Mexico. They are found hiding in underground burrows at the base of trees or in nests or burrows on the ground that were left behind by other animals. Females of the species can live as long as nearly 20 years and get around six inches in size, while males tend to live only five years and are a little smaller. This tarantula is known for its docile nature, rarely kicking hairs or showing defensive behaviors. Even as spiderlings, my golden red rumps are slower moving and prefer to stay stationary anytime I remove their lid to feed or to water them. My adult specimen is a great eater, pouncing on prey as soon as it's nearby. But my spiderling is a little more shy, usually waiting until I've put the lid back on the enclosure and placed it safely back on the shelf before even attempting to track and eat a cricket in there with her. This is a very thick and hardy species and one of the easiest New World tarantulas to care for, making it an amazing beginner tarantula, though they can be difficult to find for sale which usually means that they're going to be more expensive than the more common Brachypelma species. I keep my spiderlings in my basic spiderling enclosure with more depth and height. As small slings, I have found they really like to burrow deep as spiderlings, but after they get around an inch in size, they tend to stay out on top most of the time. I keep the substrate for my spiderlings a little more damp than I do for the larger specimens, but I avoid getting things swampy. This can be accomplished by overflowing the water dish once a week or dripping water down the side corner of the enclosure. I try to keep the lower levels of substrate damp while allowing the top layers to remain dry, giving the tarantula the option to burrow deeper for more humid conditions or stay out on top for more arid ones. I keep them on cocoa fiber and provide a little sphagnum moss and a tiny piece of cork bark for a hide. I keep my juveniles in a clear flush lid AMAC box from the container store that I'll link in the description below this video. And it measures four by four by five inches. I use either a vent or drill or melt vent holes into the side or on the top of the enclosure. I fill the enclosure up about two thirds with cocoa fiber 
and provide a hide and water dish and usually a small fake plant or some sphagnum moss or broken up dried leaves, mainly to give it that natural look. I still pour a little water down the corner of the enclosure to keep the bottom layer of substrate a little more damp than the top layer. My juveniles still tend to burrow, but spend a lot more time out in the open on top. They are notorious for filling up their water dish with dirt or flipping it over, so I have to check on their water dish at least twice a week. Once they've outgrown that enclosure, I will move them to a two and a half to five gallon style enclosure, filled up at least halfway with EcoEarth cocoa fiber. I provide a large water dish, a cork bark hide, and some fake plants or moss for aesthetic purposes. I do not recommend using live plants with this species as the plants will require more light and moisture than the tarantula seems to prefer. But most importantly, because the tea will more than likely dig up the plant and end up killing it. I keep my B. albiceps at the same temperature as most of my tarantulas, which is room temperature between 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're comfortable, your tarantulas are comfortable. When it comes to feeding, I feed my smallest spiderlings, flightless fruit flies or flower beetles, as well as pre-killed nymph roaches or pre-killed small crickets, and avoid feeding them any prey larger than the tarantula. If I don't have anything small enough available to feed, then I will pre-kill the smallest cricket I have and drop it in the enclosure for the sling to scavenge, or I'll just use the legs from larger crickets or even cut like a medium cricket in half. I always make sure to remove any uneaten prey 24 hours later and never leave any uneaten pieces of prey in the enclosure to help prevent any issues with mold or mites. I feed my juveniles three or four small medium crickets once every week or two, depending on the size of their abdomen. I don't use any prey larger than two thirds the size of the tarantula. And if I have to feed something larger, I will smash the prey's head before dropping it into the enclosure. This species can go weeks without eating, so I always check up on them 24 hours after feeding and remove any prey that they didn't eat and try again in a week or two. I normally wait seven to 10 days after a molt before feeding a juvenile again. The larger the tarantula, the longer I wait to give them plenty of time to harden up. And for adults, I feed my golden red rump about five or six large crickets every two to three weeks and cut back to once a month as they get closer to pre molt and seem less interested in food. I still make sure to remove any uneaten prey or boluses within 24 hours and I'll wait about two weeks after a molt before attempting to feed them again. I also mix up their prey with mealworms, roaches, and other feeders from time to time to give them a little variety in their diet. For many years, I referred to this species as my unicorn. I wanted to add one to my collection, but wasn't able to find one for sale for a very long time. Luckily though, in the past few years, I've been able to acquire a few, and they are one of the most treasured specimens that I have in my collection. Now these tarantulas are very docile and I'd almost describe them as friendly. Mine have never kicked any hairs at me or given me a threat pose or, or really exhibited any defensive behavior at all. But just because that's my experience doesn't mean that's gonna be your experience. So always be sure to check your tarantula's temperament before attempting to handle it or interact with it at all inside of its enclosure. Sometimes a very gentle mannered tea can still have that feeding response triggered just by the lid being removed off its enclosure or feeling some kind of vibrations or movement in the air. So always use caution when interacting with your tarantulas. I don't handle my tarantulas a lot, but when I do, this is one of the species I usually go towards. They're easy to manage, easy to take care of, and generally easy going, which is my kind of tarantula for sure. Now they can go on hunger strikes for weeks or months, especially when they're getting near a pre molt so that's nothing to worry about. Just introduce food to them every couple of weeks whenever they're acting this way, and usually they'll end up either eating or molting. Just don't leave any feeders in there when they're getting close to molt. That could be a bad time. Well, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to hit that like button, it means a lot to me. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. I upload new videos every Tuesday for Tarantula Tuesday, 
and sometimes I'll drop an extra video later on in the week. And if you're not subscribed with the notifications turned on, you'll never know. If you wanna know what I'm up to in between these videos, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. And if you wanna support this channel, I do have a Patreon. You can find links to all of those as well as the Facebook group down below in the comments or by visiting my website, thetarantulacollective.com. While you're there, you can also visit the shop that has all kinds of Tarantula Collective merchandise. This was another species that was suggested by a lot of viewers from previous videos, so I'm glad I was able to get this one covered for you. If there's a species you would like to see me cover in future episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, make sure you drop that suggestion down below in the comments so I can add it to the list. As always, this has been a lot of fun, but I gotta get to feeding some tarantulas, so I will see you next Tuesday.